If somebody hands you a poorly designed database, for example, they cram everything into one table as you see here, I mean, it's not very efficient because if I just need to pull up the customer information, do I need to see these other fields? You can imagine if you had thousands of records here, it would slow the system down to pull up those other fields and the data they're in. Not only that, but if you have a lot of columns here, you'd have to scroll over to find the columns and be able to sort through those. So instead, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and normalize this. In other words, break it down into its smallest, most meaningful tables. And right off the bat looking at it, I can tell you we've got about four tables. One for the customers, which is the customer ID, uh, customer name, and then the category, product, and then the order, or order details. Now, I can break this down one of two ways. I can either do it the long way, which is to right-click on the table, copy it, and then right-click in a blank area and paste it several times, or just enough times to be able to uh, define those tables. So I could have copy one of Autumn Sales, go inside that, delete all the fields except for the customer information like the ID, the name, and if they have a street address, and then just have that in there. Then go ahead and rename that. Instead of copy one of Autumn Sales, we can go ahead and rename it, call it the customer table. And then go into the second copy, delete everything else except, let's say, the category, call it the category table. You get the idea. In any case, that's very tedious. It takes a while because not only that, you have to, when you create those tables, create a primary key field in one table and link it to the foreign key in the other. So you're working with relationships as well. Instead, you can use the uh, table analyzer wizard, which will have access, analyze this table, and then if it finds any duplicates in a field, it'll go ahead and separate that into its own table. For example, like the category field. How many times do I see sleeping bags here? Quite a few times. It's inefficient because if I need to count up how many categories we have or what categories are available, if I have to go and see their sleeping bags, oh, there it is again, I already got that. No, there it is again. I mean, that's annoying. So it'll break that off into its own separate table. Sure, there'll be duplicates in the products table, but the main focus of the product table are the products. And in the product table, if I want to find out what products we sell, I don't need to see double bag listed, uh, duplicated several times just only the products that we sell. The only time that will be duplicated really is in the orders because you can have one client purchase, you know, one product and then another client purchase the same product. So to normalize this, to use the table analyzer wizard, go ahead and select the table, which by the way, it can only analyze one table at a time. Then come up here, click on the database tools tab, go to the uh, analyze group, click on analyze table. Now the first two windows or screens in the analyzer wizard starts off by saying, hey, here's how we look at problems. When you click next, it'll show you how it solves them. So it's looking at the problem when it sees repeat information. It says, okay, first of all, duplicating information waste space. We're going to eliminate that and create a separate table. Well, it doesn't say that there. It says it when we go to the next screen. And then also another problem is the supplier's name is misspelled. So if you have data entry issues or somebody doesn't know how to spell it or they're trying to abbreviate it, I mean, in the database, it's looking at two separate suppliers because one's misspelled. In any case, click Next. And it says, okay, here's how we solve problems like that takes the original table, breaks it down into uh, smaller, more meaningful tables. It's got the products and then the suppliers. Over in the products table, you have the products listed once. Over in the suppliers table, you have the suppliers listed once with the supplier ID. What links the two is the foreign key um, supplier ID that can be looked up and found in the suppliers table, the supplier ID primary key field there. Makes sense? That's how it solves it. So to get started, click Next. Select the table that you want analyzed, and we only have one here, so we'll click Next. And then it says, do you want the wizard to decide what fields go on what tables? Yes or no? If you choose no and click next, then let me hover over the bottom and click and drag to stretch that table open. It's got all the fields that are available. And if I want to go ahead and create my uh, own tables to break this down, just go ahead and select a field, click and drag it over into the blank area, let go. It does two things. It creates a relationship and it creates the table. And then it says, okay, what name do you want to give this table? It's going to be TBL, three letter prefix for our customers. Then hit enter. Then I can hover over the bottom of that, click and drag to stretch it open. And what's interesting here is that access isn't perfect, but it comes pretty close, I guess, at least for most of what I've seen, is that when it generates a unique ID field, I don't need that because the customer ID is already unique. In other words, there's no duplicates in this field. So what I can do is instead of using this one, which has the auto number for every customer ID, it's going to number it sequentially, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so there's no duplicates. I'm going to select customer ID because I know there's no duplicates there. Come up here, click on the primary key. It removes the uh, added unique ID field and it just assigns the primary key to my customer ID. So there's a one-to-many relationship. What other fields can go on the customer table? Well, the customer name, so click and drag that there. And then if I want to go ahead and create a product table, well then select the product, click and drag that up here. Go ahead and name it, TBL, hit enter, and then go ahead and drag all the corresponding fields into that table. So you get the idea, right? I mean, as we drag them from here, it moves them over into another table. 
then creates a corresponding foreign key field that can link to that table. That's one way. The other way, let me click back. The one that I like is let the wizard do all the work and then I'll decide if I like it. Click next. And there we go, you got a total of five tables. Now if you want to see them, and you can see the relationships are being crossed. I don't like being in crossed relationships, so let's go ahead and click and drag these tables around so these lines don't cross. So I can see them a little bit better up here. And then click at the bottom and drag to open up and expand, or at the top to click and drag up, and then down below. So it looks like what it did here is it found the quantity field, and it says, okay, there are duplicates in that field, so we'll keep that as a separate table. If I don't like that, and I want that as part of let's see the other tables, um, order, this could be the orders table, then I can go ahead and click and drag that into here. And move this around. And, and not have that as part of that table, but actually I like it, so I'm grateful they have the undo button, because here I'll call it the order details table. This will be the orders, and this will be the details of the orders, like the quantity sold. And I can add more fields later once it generates these tables here, but this is getting the uh, dirty work done, where it creates the relationships and uh, also breaks them up where it finds duplicate fields. Now, looking at this, it created a unique ID field, again, because it found duplicates in that table. This table, you'll have duplicate products and possibly price, so unique, category. Um, it's going to be unique. I'm okay with that. But for the customer ID, like I said, that has no duplicates in it, so Access figured it out and said, look, we don't need to generate a unique ID field and have the uh, data type auto number, let's just go ahead and assign it the customer ID. And also for the order number, that's unique. So if everything looks good here, before I move on, I want to go ahead and name the tables. Like for example, table one, come up here and click on the rename table, and then three letter prefix, TBL, I'll have it as the order details, hit enter. And then table two, it's about the orders, click on it to rename it, TBL. Let's see, what fields do I have in table three? The product, the price, okay, it's going to be the product table. TBL, products, hit enter. Table five, category table, select it. Click on the rename button, hit enter, and then the customer table. Go ahead and click rename and hit enter. Okay, looks good. Let's click next. Then Access says, okay, do bold fields uniquely identify each record in the proposed table? I mean, basically, it's stating the same thing because it says if no fields have unique values, the wizard can add a generated unique ID field for you. And either go ahead and set it or go ahead and add generated key. Because when I click on this, it actually generates a key for me and it doesn't assign it to the field that I had selected. Let me go ahead and hit undo. As opposed to selecting the field and just clicking on the primary key so it updates it from this field, removes it, and adds it to that one. Okay. Click next. Now here the wizard found some records with very similar values. If you want to make a correction, like for the ones that it found, like canteen, click on the drop down arrow and say, it's not a canteen, it's supposed to be, well, one of these other choices here. Backpack for $79. In any case, if there's no changes, just go ahead and leave as is. And then go ahead and click Next. And then when you click Finish, do you want uh, access to create a query? I'll say, no, don't create query. Click Finish. And there we go. It says the commander action tile horizontally isn't available now. That's okay. I don't want to do it when I'm in tab view, so click OK. And there's all the tables. We've got the category tab here, categories, customers, products, orders, order details, and then our original table. I can go ahead and click on the expand button for the navigation pane, and you can see I've got my original table in case if I want to do this again, make changes, that's good, and then all the others. If I like it, I can go ahead and delete this one, and I have my uh, single table now normalized, broken down into the smallest, most meaningful tables here. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.